So we'll be having some set of questions is going to be there. Like what is meant by verification and validation? And uh, I want to explain these things. Like I will just go through that. So what is inspection? It seems that is this, these things and all the things and all already we have discussed, but for each and everything, right? That there is a particular terms is going to be there. What is meant by validation? And uh, like what is meant by QA, QC and uh, so those things and all we are just going to see. So in the system testing, what are the sub like what are the types that are available? So like this, we are just going to have. See, I'll just explain you about the tested design techniques and all in the next session. So first of all, when we are just going through this test plan right here. So while going through this test plan only we thought of uh, looking into the bug tracking related stuff right but uh, so uh, bug life cycle we have seen about the bug life cycle now you are comfortable right so what is bug life cycle and uh, how the priorities and uh, severities are going to set all these things like you are feeling comfortable i think right now right so now i'm just coming back to the test plan so in the test plan again it's going to be like uh, everything is going to be in a proper way already we have seen what is the purpose of this test plan that needs to be specified and the overview of the uh, project you are going to specify and also who is the audience that we have seen and we are looking into the strategies test strategies correct one second just a minute Okay, fine. So we are looking into this test strategies related stuff, right? So what is meant by test strategies? That means, see, what are the main objectives you are just going to follow for doing this testing? And also what are the key aspects it's going to be? And how you are just going to carry out this particular testing cycles? How many times? How many cycles you are just going to do and uh, what are the functional testing sets there and what are the test principles you are going to follow and uh, what are the data approaches where from where you are going to get the, such kind of data for these applications and uh, what is the scope and the levels of testing like uh, there is apart from the requirement document you are going to do some kind of testing like exploratory testing and uh, some kind of testing what are that type of testing and all you are just going to do it here so these things and all right we are just going to discuss today right so when it comes to the testing strategies first thing we uh, it comes to our mind is like uh, see what is the objective of this particular testing is so mainly if you what is the main objective so you are just going to verify the complete functionalities of the system. That is our main objective. Like that functionalities, everything should get satisfied uh, by the, uh, like uh, it should be available in the uh, documents, requirement specification documents. Whatever the things that is mentioned in the requirement specification documents, you are just going to verify that all the, specified points has been covered in this testing or not so that kind of things and all you are just going to do it that is the main objective the main objective of this test is to verify that the functionalities of this project it works according to the specifications right this next point is the test will execute and verify the test scripts identify the bug fixing the bugs issues and retesting all the high and medium severity defects as per the entrance criteria prioritize low severity defects and future fixing via cr so these things and all we have seen like uh, yesterday we have seen how the bugs are going to be identified 
and what is the process you are going to follow for uh, tracking all the bugs okay and and uh, based on which uh, uh, priorities and severities the team is going to work those things and all we are going we have already discussed so these things and all it should be an objective so uh, you want to they they will be mentioning this particular thing how they are going to carry over this particular part in this test plan document itself and the final product of the test is to like actually this is the two fold or something like see here it's a two points i think like a product should be the final product of the test should uh, test is given in the two points so it's a point a product is a ready software a, sorry pro, a production ready software should be prepared at the ending of this uh, application has been done and a set of stable test scripts that can be reused for functional and uat test execution so a set of stable test scripts can be reused for functional and uat test that means when you are going to prepare some set of test cases so the test cases should always it should uh, covered with all the functional and ui related stuff and uh, the same thing should be reusable for the entire year. even whatever the things that you have developed as a test cases that should be reusable at the point of regression time and regression functional testing side and as well as that the same thing should be used for uat purpose also actually these things and all right it's going to be very much uh, like it is going to be like similar like uh, for their particular project see what is the project that we are going to do right for that particular project so we have specified this point but in your case right it may get vary also okay that depends on the project to project it's going to vary the next one is what is your assumptions like see for example you are just going to do one uh, like you are just going to do the testing for example we'll take one small scenario here so uh, one of the functionalities has been developed by the development engineers and it is going to be sent it to the test engineers correct that means qa qa team qa or testers when it comes to the next qa or testers so the qa team is going to validate the software which has been released by the customers so here while validating if this uh, like if QA is like a testing team is going to find out some bugs. That means they are going to identify some bugs here in this software which has been released. Then that software bugs are going to be reported to this development engineers. So this is going to be the first one. This is cycle one. This, in this cycle, they are going to release it to the developers. developers are going to fix the issues and again they are going to release the same thing to the qa team so again qa team is going to just validate and again if they are going to find out any more bug like still there is uh, some bugs are exist in the system means then this qa team is going to send the code back to this particular development team so the development team is going to again fix the issues and they're going to send it back to the qa team this is called cycle 2 next again if they are going to test and they, again they are going to find some issues again we are just going to send it back to the development team here as a development team like okay so they are going to again fix the issues and they are going to send it back to the qa team and this cycle is going to be mentioned as third cycle here 
like this the process is going to continue till the bugs in, uh, they are going to identify the bugs but here in uh, like each and every project they will be having some set of restrictions here that means so that restrictions they are going to mention here that means maximum only three cycles should be gone so more than the three cycles the nothing should should be gone so this is our uh, as, like assumptions approx approximate assumptions it's going to be that means they want to complete the entire like uh, they want to fix all the bugs and released without any defect before this cycle 2 itself if they are going to complete all the bugs in the cycle 1 itself means that is going to be more happy so if they are going to be complete everything within the cycle 2 it's going to be a little bit more happy if they are going to fix all the bugs within the cycle 3 that is fine so more than cycle 3 if they are going to proceed then it's not a fair okay so it is not a good uh, good uh, life cycle that means even the developers are simply doing the mistakes testers also they are not finding out the bugs properly in the initial stages itself so there may, there will be some set of uh, things is going to be comes into the picture okay again and again if you are going your team is going to do a rework means what happened so it is going to like uh, it's going to give a bad impression to the management as well as to the customers right unnecessarily the time is going to get wasted and uh, also the de development time is going to be uh, expanded like and the testing time also is going to be like uh, it's it going to take more time so like this we are just going to have like they have just uh, they, their assumption is in each testing phase cycle 3 will be initiated if the defect rate is very high in the cycle 2 or otherwise they are going to stop in the cycle 2 itself so production like data required and be available in the system prior to start of functional testing so this is one of the point see here two points is there these are all the assumptions so the team should follow this kind of assumptions that means so before uh, they, they should try to complete the things within the cycle 2 itself they should not go to the cycle 3 until unless if they are going to have very defect rates are very high then only they need to go to the cycle 3 related stuff second point is so the production live uh, production like data is required uh, and be available in the system prior to the start of functional testings one second just a minute Okay, fine. See, this point you are aware of, and this point is like, for example, you are just going to release your project to the production. See, usually how the releases are going to be. Initially, we are just, the developer is going to develop, and they are going to release it to the server called dev server. Dev server. Once the, it is fine with the dev server, the developer or developers are going to release it to the next level called dev server and it's going to be uh, testing server 
testing server or stage server. We are going to call them as an testing or stage stage servers. Once this testing server there, we are going to make sure that all the things are working fine in this testing server. Then finally, we are going to move that to move the same code to the production server. We are going to call them as a production server. Or we are just going to call them as a live server. Correct. So here it's going to be uh, like if you if you are going to test the application in this testing environment, what like uh, if you are going to have at least some set of live data related stuff in this testing server, then it is going to help you to do at least some 90% of the scenarios you are just going to cover with the live data related stuff. So there is a live production data is going to be there. If you are going to transfer that data to this particular server and if you are going to test with that live data means you are going to get more uh, like you are just going to uh, test more scenarios. You are just going to cover more number of scenarios here. So then if you are going to cover more number of scenarios means with the live data means then almost everything is going to be tested and fixed at this testing stage itself. So it, after moving it to the live server, the customers will not be able to find more number of defects related to data also. See, usually, right, um, after we do our testings, the customers is going to find out some set of data related to data only, the production data and data. So if you are going to have such kind of data in the stage server itself means, then it is going, you are going to cover all such kind of scenarios and all in the stage itself. You are going to test it completely. You are understanding this point. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. See, this is the one of the assumption here. So it's going to be like so now. This is the point. Like this is one of the key point, which is going. They are going to mention in the test plan itself. See, uh, in this project, they are expecting the production like data should be available in the system prior to the start of the functional testing. Before you start the functional testing, so all these data should be available with you. So that's what your expectation, like that's what their expectation is. Okay, you just got this point, right? So this is the very key assumptions for them. And what are the general assumptions it's going to be in this project? What is the process they want to follow means? First, initially, the requirements study is done. So the requirement study should be done properly by the business analyst. And also, uh, like why they are they are mentioning this point means if the business analyst is not going to do the requirement study properly means then it is going to be painful for everyone. So whatever the uh, drawbacks that is available in the requirement itself, if they are going to correct or if they are going to get the correct requirement, then it is going to make our life easier. Like no other persons is going to get affected. That is the reason. So in this project, they are telling that so requirement study should be done properly by the business analyst. And also unit testing will be performed by the development team in our project. So they are going to say that unit testing is going to be, see these things and all they are mentioning in the, who is going to do which type of testing. That means they have mentioning in the plan itself, test plan itself. So based on this test plan only, everyone should just go and follow the process. So here development team responsibility, some in some places, right? So unit testing also is responsible for automation test engineers. Okay, 
so that kind of things and all like uh, the, so some companies have that restriction so if that is the case means they are going to mention that this is responsible by the test in automation test engineers and other point is like you are just going to exploratory testing would be carried out once the build is ready for testing that means what is meant by an exploratory testing do you have any idea what is meant by exploratory testing see the testing which the tester is going to do without referring to any document see initially when the build is ready right at that time so this people Yes, am I having any doubt? Yeah, I think actually one of the person is missing here, right? Sneha is there. And, uh, one second. Sujata is missing. What? Sujata is missing. Sujata is missing, right? Like she did not yeah. inform also. One second, just a minute. Okay, fine. So here, right? Exploratory testing means you you know what is meant by exploratory testing in the sense. See the testing which the test engineers are going to do uh, when the see before it uh, we are just going to do some kind of uh, uh, detailed functional testing or some kind of. Uh, specified testing right so our team is going to do the uh, exploratory testing without referring to any document here we will not refer to any document so once the build is ready means then we are going to take that build and we are going to do some kind of testings that is called exploratory testing see if you just see here right so I, we have just seen here, I think, what is meant by an exploratory testing. Can you send this document to us, Rajesh? Sure, sure. I'm just going to send you this document. See, uh, why I did not send this document completely means, see, I just, I am trying to, uh, after completing this, if I'm going to send, right? So that is going to make sense for you people. Like while reading, you'll be able to understand easily. So I'm having mm -hmm. some two to three documents is there. So I'll just forward this document to you once it is done. Means. So anyway, we are just almost completed the manual process. So we, we, before we just start the automation, right? I'll just forward you all this manual testing related stuff. Okay. okay. Here. Here it is not there. Okay, this thing itself we are having this. Mm -hmm. We have seen about the compatibility testing and all we have seen, right? So did yeah. you remember what is meant by compatibility testing? I'm just did you remember what is meant by compatibility testing means I want some answer for this I don't remember oh see compatibility testing like already we have seen like I think like what about others bias and the uh, well oh, see I don't remember 
see it is very harmful we have see, we have just <laughs> seen about these things but now simply you are saying it's then what is the purpose of going through all these things so i am expecting some uh, like a positive uh, like motivation related stuff from your end also like as you need to uh, spend some time see if i'm just simply uh going through the things and after i just completed the things means if you are not going to refer back the things right it is not going to be there in your mind so whatever the things that we daily discussed at least try to go through the videos or otherwise try to uh read about these particular points okay fine well, i'll do one thing so i'll try to send this documents to you people at least then you will be able to read the things right even though if i did not completed maybe some of the things so i'm just going to forward this documents to you people so try to read the documents and come up if you have any questions or something so that may help you i think right yes okay fine see here what is meant by compatibility testing means we are going to test our application in different different missions by using different different softwares by using different different operating systems which is going to be irrelevant to the hardware the hardware also is going to be different different hardware so either it, it should work fine in your system as well as in servers or whatever that may be and also like your application should works fine with any kind of software so that is the compatibility testing compatibility testing is a type of software testing to check whether your software is capable of running on different hardware operating systems applications and network environment or mobile devices so it compatibility means you already know right so your software like your software or otherwise your See, you are using one set of mobile. Your mobile should be always compatible with some other things. It means Android is very much flexible. But if you just go to the uh, iPhone, like Apple, right? It's going to be more secured. Like you, it is not more flexible. So you cannot just compare. Uh, see, in the i iPad, iPad related stuff, they can just i Apple related stuff. They they. they'll be able to do the compatibilities but when it comes to the android or some other things right they are not able to do the compatibility related stuff but when it comes to the application side right your application should be whatever the application you are developing either a mobile software or either a uh, like a normal uh, android software or otherwise like a, it's a web application whatever the things it's a product or whatever the things that Uh, software should work properly in any environment okay that should work in any environment it like you you should not say that my application is going to work in only in the windows you cannot say my application is going to work only in the linux so only in the mac os it is going to work like that you cannot say whatever the application you are going to design right <clears throat> that should work in any environment so that is called compatibility so already we have seen what are the types of compatibility testings also so it's going to be like uh, hardware compatibility os op operating system compatibility software network os browser browser means your application should works fine in firefox browser google chrome browser internet browser and all the browser so your application should be in such a way so it should support for entire things next means devices so whatever the device it may be your so it it is going to check compatibilities of your softwares with different devices like usb port devices printer scanner and what are the things it may be your application from your application they sh should be like uh, some set of printers and scanners also should be easily accessible 
So you cannot say that uh, from my applications, I cannot do go and print or something like it. If they really require that, we want to support. And also mobile related things and version of the software. You are getting these points. Compatibility yes. means you are going to do such kind of compatible like backward compatibility and forward compatibility. What is meant by backward compatibility? Did you remember this? I think I have just shown you this uh, picture also. Backward compatibility in the sense. So you, you for example, you have developed your software. Uh, like uh, for example, you are using Python. So you say that you, uh, you have developed your software in Python 3.0. Now, your application should also work fine in Python 2 also. Python 2.0 also. Your application should work in, even though you have developed your application with the latest technology called Python 3.0, but your application should run properly when you are working with Python 2.0 related stuff. This is called backward compatibility. Forward compatibility means, see for example, if you have developed your application by using Python 2.0, if you are just going to, uh, like after migrating your application from 2.0 to 3.0, with minor changes, all the things should work properly, okay, as it is. Such kind of things and all, you're going to say that it's a forward compatibility. Now you got it. So in the similar way, there is an testing called exploratory testing is there. So what is meant by an exploratory testing here? See, exploratory testing is nothing but it is a kind of testing where you are not going to refer any documentation. Exploratory testing. See. That uh, this type of testing requires the testing knowledge, testers' knowledge, experience, analytical and logical skills, creativity. We were seeing, right? Like uh, regarding, like when we are discussing about in the test plan, we thought of like uh, we have just uh, seen what is compatibility testing and all. Like, can anyone? come up with what is meant by exploratory testing and what is meant by uh, compatibility testing. I want like anyone can answer this question, please. Either Payas or otherwise Sujata or Devi. Compatibility testing means uh, uh, testing our software with different hardware or operating system like iOS or Windows. And exploratory testing means uh, without test cases, uh, we just test to know the functionalities of the uh, application without requirement or without test cases. Yes, perfect, very good. So like, I think everyone got this right, like what is meant by exploratory testing and See, why we went there in the in the, our test plan. See, these are all the assumptions that we want to, these are all the assumptions they have prepared in the document. That means before they really start the functional testing, so they are asking to provide the pro production like data in the stage environment. That is one requirement that should be satisfied. 
other requirements is always try to stop your testing uh, uh, like uh, testing cycle only like you just take it to uh, two cycles until unless if you are going to have any defect rate is very high then only you just go for the cycle, third cycle so try to always stop the your testing cycle in within this like try to stop within this two cycle itself so these are all the instructions that is given in this document so testing as a test engineer you want to follow this particular things so before you go to testing you just check that all the production like data is available or not then only you start your testing and also when it comes to the general points means so here business analyst is going to take care of this uh, should be take care by the business analyst requirements and unit testing should be take care by the development team so this is the point which we are going to this is the document which we are going to circulate to business analyst as well as the development team okay so no worries on that and as a test engineer what you want to do means initially once the project has been released that build has been released you want to do before you just refer some set of documents and doing some set of testing right so you are just going to do some set of exploratory testings so exploratory testing means you already told me so what is meant by exploratory testing so i no need to explain once again and here after this all the defects uh, like in this project they are going to track the defects in the excel they are going to prepare one defect document see for example here i just want to sh show you how the uh defects are going to be logged in one second that is called issue uh okay see this is the defect uh, recording tool this is uh, they, they told right in the uh, in this document in this document they specified this plan document they are going to record all the uh defects in the tracking excel excel they are going to use the excel in this uh project so here we are just going to have this is the issues what are the issues or defects you find in your application those issues are going to be recorded using this kind of see there will be some set of uh, tools will be there if you just go to some set of tools right in the online itself will be having some lot of uh, uh, defect tracking tools or it's going to be there so for example if you see defect tracking tool tools in online so there will be some set of defect tracking tools bug tracking tool like actually now the jira came into the picture so i have just explained you about how the jira is working right so you are just going to record all this informations in the jira see for example so we are going to have issue number and uh, what is the uh, who is the login user role what is the login user role so and also what is the action you are just going to do see this column names are going to get vary based on the project to project you know worries okay some people may have this column or some projects may may not have this column but you will you may have this like you may have this column or otherwise you, you are just going to specify this login role in here itself in the login description itself and also in our project like in one of this project right we are just using this request type what type of request is either it's a request or request or otherwise it's a, a functional request or terminate request or a, a creation request some type of request will be there right we want to uh, use that particular request type here and also there will be module name or page name you want to mention that module or page name here then the description see what exactly the uh, issue is so in this type in this uh, user role uh, user role so something like there is a uh, tab is there global queue tab or something in that tab on clicking the alliance id link or something so we are getting pop ups with hi 
this pop up should not be displayed so this is one kind of issue actually this high messages and all like they have developer has uh, like when they are uh, developing the code they have uh, they for testing purpose they have applied this so without uh, removing that they have moved the code to the production stage server so that we want to be have just find out in the similar way there will be another set of things in the tier 2 approval page the comments tab the text box is not getting displayed maybe you are saying that there should be one one set of comment text box should be there which is not getting displayed this is one kind of issue and in the similar way if you see here in the request tab by clicking on the request completed link the terminate summary page gets loaded in the terminate summary page the below given fields are getting displayed with minus 99 instead of minus 99 right it should show the value or empty that means in this phone numbers and uh, uh, postal code and all it is there in that particular page in that phone number and postal code they are displaying with minus 99 so it should not display with minus 99 if they are, they can keep it as an empty or otherwise they should uh, specify some set of values that's it but here minus 99 and all should not get displayed in this particular field and all so this like this what are the issues that you are going to find out in the in your application those issues and all you are just going to record in a bug tracking tool so here the issues are going to be recorded and when you have uh, created this issue that date should be there and uh, when like uh, what is the status current status either it's a open status or in progress or assigned to some user he is working on or the developer is differing with us it is not an issue or like that our developer is going to reject so they are going to say that it's exactly that it's not an issue at all so and once this has been raised if it is a real issue then it is an in, in progress status we need to record The, when the issue is going, is fixed by the developer and what date and what is the status is like for example it is in assigned and in progress and after the, some time they are going to fix the issue then they want to mark it as a fixed issue so you are just going to say that 3105 so 2022 or something so and so then in, in, pro, in progress means they are working on it right the bug yes in progress means still they are working actually so what, testing what, what about assigned assigned means it is like this has been assigned to one of the developer see you have raised the issue that you are saying that this corresponding uh, in the system it is not working so it is wrongly getting displayed so you have raised then that is going to be assigned to one of the developer so they, like who is going to assign it means so maybe the project manager can take this issue and he can assign this uh, issue to one of the developer then the developer is going to work on this particular thing if he wants to work means he want to change this assign status to in progress status once it is in in progress means he is working on actually uh, here in progress means it is not the developer related stuff actually it is testing related stuff see Uh, you have just created the issue initially it will be open then if uh, if this this is the developer uh, fixed status type this is the developer if the developer has fixed the issue so just we are going to keep it as a not a testing status it's a status okay it may be a testing status or status so once it has been assigned to a developer then he is going to uh, assigned means that will be displayed and that, that will be uh, assigned by the manager to that corresponding developer assigned to a developer the the status is going to be assigned here but actually assigned means assigned to a developer then this developer is going to change this assigned status to in progress developer has changed the assigned status to in progress when he is going to change this status to in progress means 
see whenever he he is he has taken this issue and uh, uh, when he started working on this particular issue at that time only he can just go and change the status to in progress so before he takes into that his consideration before he starts work on this particular thing so it is going to be in an assigned status only so you are getting it right see you are getting initially i i'll just uh, tell you that initially when the issue has been identified so for example the tester is testing the application tester if he sometimes right everything works fine it is going to be like you are going to confirm that system is working fine so system works fine works fine so if you are going to identify any bug so initially when you are uh, identified the bug means the bug status is going to be open it's going to be open once the bug has been opened then uh, here you this is going to be looked by the uh, development managers managers are going to check this bug if it is a really a bug if it is a really a bug then the manager is going to assign this bug that means assign to a developer assign to a developer you are getting this point once it is assigned means so it is going to be in the assigned list so maybe the developer can like the manager can assign 1 2 3 4 5, many bugs can be assigned to a developer so if he is going to start working on this particular thing then this bug is going to be he is going to change that bug into in progress in progress so he is going to change this bug to an in progress status who is going to change developer is going to change himself because he already it has been assigned to his name now if he, he has started working on this particular issue means the status is going to change to in progress after that once he has fixed the issue then this developer is going to change the issue status to uh, fixed correct so then the then he is going to change the issue status to fixed once this has been fixed here so then again it is going back to the who is going to change the status to fixed means developer here open who is going to do tester tester he is going to open the issue and this is going to be this bug is going to be uh, main this bugs are going to be managed or checked by the managers checked by the managers and they are going to change here manager is going to assign manager is going to assign to a developer and here the developer is going to change the status from assigned to uh, in progress in progress means he started he started working on this issue once he has completed the issue fixed then he is going to move to the uh, the, the developer is going to change the status from in progress to fixed once it has been changed from it has been changed to fixed then finally it is going to the testing team testing team so the testing team and the tester is going to check this particular issue and they are going to change the status to resolved once it has been resolved and moved to the server uh, to the live server then finally they are going to change the status to closed you are getting this points see if we are going to identify any issues or defects or bugs we are going to raise that bugs in the bug tracking tool 
either you can see it is a old format like like uh, it is not a old format in some companies they are following still they are following the excel for tracking this issues some companies they are using some set of bug tracking tool nowadays all the companies are using jira i have already explained you about the jira how the jira is working now you just got the trait right? have you remember that or not see how to raise a bug in jira did you remember okay fine see what about others like everyone is able to remember right yes okay fine see the usually the bugs usually it is going to be raised in this manner only so your status are going to be like this so when you have raised that is going to be recorded and what is the status it's going to get changed see usually these are all the bugs bug status it's like a, see sometimes right here if the developer is going to say that so if he it has been assigned to the developer and he is going to say that he is going to differ with some set of issues differ means he is going to say it is not an issue at all or otherwise developer can come up with like it is a duplicate issue already you have raised such kind of issue but again you are raising the issue so like this status also it may be there and also like the developer can say that it cannot be uh, not able to reproducible not re reproduce not able to reproduce you are getting it right sir if the status is duplicate then in that case uh, so they close the issue or uh, the bug is still yeah. open yes that point only i'm just coming i'm just going to come to the next point see if they are going to come up with this type of issues we as a qa team or test engineers we want to justify either you have like if it is not a really a duplicate issue that what are the issue that you have already raised that is not related to this particular functionality means you want to explain them you want to give a comments and you want to resend the issue to the same developer saying that this is not a duplicate issue like that you want to see uh, you want to give some comments you want to explain so it's not a really duplicate if it is really a duplicate you want to accept this and you want to just close it so you just close the issue by just giving some comments that's it so you understand this point right but yes And so if, what about not row yeah i'm just going to the next point see if they are going to come up with the differ differ means they are going to say differ means usually why we'll get the difference see differ in the sense uh, their uh, way uh, that they have they are thinking that it should it should have the system should happen like this only but you are saying that the system should not happen like this then who is going to be true so they are they are showing some set of proofs in the document they are saying that see this uh, if i am just going to do such kind of thing this is the output we are going to get so for this i am having a proof called either high level design document or requirement document something they are, the developers are going to show they are going to attach to this issue and then what you want to do if yeah the way you have think is from the customer perspective then you want to argue with them argue in the sense like you want to just uh, convey them say the customer is uh, like he is expecting this kind of things only but whatever the things that is given in the document that is not going to get work out so kindly do this and these changes please consider these changes or uh, uh, issues like that we are just going to convince them or otherwise if it is a really an uh, Uh, deferred like uh, that requirements whatever the things that developers is showing us so if you are going to agree with that particular point of time then you want to close that's it usually right if we are raising the bugs means we always should be very careful so such kind of revert backs and all should not come to us 
is that the, the developer should not say it's a duplicate related stuff or it's a deferred related stuff unnecessarily the develop like uh, if you are going to raise such kind of issues then it's going to be uh, very much painful for the developers even they cannot not only the, the developers so no one can like uh, if the developer is not going to do the some set of task within the given time it is going to affect us so if it is going to affect us automatically release is going to affect us release is going to affect us customer is going to give a kick so that is the reason always when you are raising any bugs or issues always you think you must think for two to three times either whatever the information that you are giving here that is correct or wrong so you want to check the requirement properly you want to check the test cases properly and you want to discuss with the team properly and then only you can just uh, raise such kind of issues and all okay so and the next point is not able to simulate see some sometimes what happened right you you from your end you are able to simulate simulate in the sense so for example here uh, you take for example username is there so uh, and password is there take a login page itself password is there here you are having forgot password link is there forgot password link and login button is there. if you are going to click on this forgot password link right it should take you to the forgot password uh, pop up page where that forgot password pop up is not opening in the server from your end but you have raised this issue and it is going to the development team developer are trying to simulate that issue in his local system uh, in in his local he is getting properly that pop up and all there is no blocker sir happening so then at that particular point of time so you want to give this url to them and you want to ask them to check in this particular uh, testing url you want to just simulate this issue so and that is going to make sure that so that kind of simulations and all so it's going to happen okay this kind of things and all it should be there like not able to simulate the issues you may face in some situations so the, for that you should be with a proper justification you should uh, uh, convey it to the developers so proper uh, simulation proper scenarios and proper documentation should be provided to the developers then only the developers is going to agree with us or otherwise they are not going to agree with us right you are getting this points is there any questions i'm just asking like anyone is having any doubt or like uh, whatever the things that we are going is right right no, sir how is it possible because the developer and uh, qa both use the same environment and same re requirement document then still why it's not reproducible see um see the same environment means what what you are saying that here environment means. so for you right no yes yes having in like i'm just explaining you is it fine you are able to hear me or not Uh, I have. You are able to hear me. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think she got a call. Okay, I don't know. Like, uh, I think Sneha only, right? Sneha is asking something. Sneha or Sujata? Uh, Sujata has the dot, not me. Okay. So suddenly no voice. Okay, fine. Not a problem. See here. See if 
you uh, see developers are going to develop their code in their local environment i'll just tell you on another thing see usually right uh, the developers is going to be there right developers are going to develop the software in their local systems local systems local laptop or systems so once they have developed in the local system they are going to move that software which has been developed to the development server that is called dev server we are going to call them as a dev servers so if this developers needs to test they are just going to test using this test dev server dev ser they are going to test it in dev server means what see they are going to launch the application using the url called dev url using the dev url they are going to launch this application and they are going to test yes nothing nothing sorry okay fine see now the developers is going to develop develop the software in the local system and they are going to move the code to the dev server development server so this is one of the server which is going to be there for testing for testing the developers for testing this ur this url is going to be used by the developers developers are going to test this application by using this url once the developer has developed then like we are just going to have the like once the developer has completed their uh, testing they are going to move the same code to another environment called qa servers qa servers so here we as a test engineers we are going to test this application by using the qa url url is going to be different so this testing dev url is going to be different and our qa url is going to be different so if the, the, uh, the this qa server if you are going to test right you are going to use this url from the developer server if you want to test right you are going to use this particular url so either qa server you can call it as a qa server or stage server you can call it as a stage server or otherwise testing server qa or testing server so this url is going to be this url where your application has been hosted in this server the url is going to be uh, some different url and this qa url or a testing url is going to be some other url now once testing server has been done it is going to be moved to the another server called customer server that is called a live server live server is is called live server or uh, customer server stakeholder server or customer servers so here the url of this particular server is going to be little bit different that is called a live url you are getting my point yes okay see now, now we if we are going to test means we are going to test it in this particular uh, url using this particular url if you are going to find out some issue in this url you are going to report it to the development team saying that this is not working but the developer what he is going to do he is going to check in his local system and he is going to say that he is not able to simulate the issue here but that same thing is not working in this particular qa server so and after this qa server is not working means then the developer is going to either he, he want to check in his local and as well as he wants to check in this dev server also if he, if both the things are working fine in uh, local and dev server means then he is going to differ with the things so means not simulatable like that he is going to change the status to not simulatable then the qa uh, that means now we as a test engineer we want to prove 
uh, where it is not working, exactly in which scenario it is not working. So those things and all, we want to prove it sometimes. It, it is going to be a very painful for our QA team as a testing team. Sometimes we, they, they will be challenging with the things. We want to prove ourselves, whatever the issue that you have raised, right? Simply, they cannot say not simulatable. You want to simulate that from your environment and show it to these guys. If it is really an issue, means they want to take it and fix it. If it is like uh, for you, maybe one time it is not simulatable, one time it is simulatable and all means, that is going to be a little bit painful for you and as well as for the developer. You are getting this point, right? So that is the way, like here, the bug, uh, bug tracking are going to happen. Now you understand, right? Like how the uh, raise, you are going to raise an issue. What is the status of this bus is going to be? And here, so you, you have raised the issue. Okay, you have raised, for example, some 10 issues you have raised. In this, the when it goes to the developer, which issue he wants to take first, which issue he wants to take next. So for that, right, you want to have another column called, there is an, there should be an another column should be there called. So priority of a bug and severity. Priority and severity of the bugs are going to be given. So what is the severity and priority? You are going to say that if it is a really critical issue, so after finding out this issue, you are not able to proceed at means you are just going to mark it as a critical issue. So then that is going to be priority one for the developer. Priority is going to be for the developer. Severity is going to be defined by us. So either you, you can define or otherwise either managers can define the severities. So you are going to give the severity, manager can change the severities also. Priorities and all, it is purely depends on the developers. Like, uh, so we are going, the managers are going to set the priorities based on the severities only. So either first, first priority, the developer wants to take this as a first priority and fix this issue uh, as soon as possible. Or otherwise, if it is a little bit okay related stuff, uh, but it is a functionality really affecting some kind of functionality. So which is not getting displayed or something, but it is not getting crashed. That type of things and all, we are going to make it as a high severity defects. That means this high severity defects and all is going to be marked as priority level two. That is P2. Here it's a P1, priority one. So for whom it's going to be very much priority means for the developer. So developer wants to take all the priority one issues and he want to fix all the one related issues. Next, he wants to take the already P2 related issues. So next severity, you are just going to make it as either high and medium. Medium related issues. That one, it is going to come under priority three issues. Then you are just going to have low, low level issues. That is called P4 issues. P4 or P5. That is going to be different. That, that classification is going to be another subclassification of that. Till P6, it's going to be there. You are getting? Are you getting this point? Yes. Okay. Fine. Based on this, priorities so, and severe. Only yes? six priorities will be there. Pardon? Only six priorities will be there, not until, uh, not a extend this one right yeah and here priorities right yes yeah most probably only, only six, six, six not more than that definitely it will not be there maybe based on the application based on the scenarios um, based on the project they may have or they may not have so even some project right they will not they will be having only around the p4 or p5 so some people can keep p up to p6 also See, that depends on the project exactly i'm not uh, i'm not saying so only p6 is going but uh, if you see most probably till p6 only we are we are just going to have in a lot like 70 uh, percent of the projects i'm giving assurance for 
up to 70 to 80 percent of the projects they are going to have only up to p6 so we will not have more than that maybe uh, that 10 or 20 percent of the companies or projects right that may uh, that they may have some other things also depends on their particular uh, scenarios okay that is most probably it will not be varied six up to p6 you are going to have so here in the critical high medium these things and also right yeah, in the intermediate you are just going to have some set of uh, things also so critical and uh, i say high and then uh, medium uh, low and then um, like uh, you may have some kind of another uh, status also it's going to be that one second i just low and then very low or something you may have some kind of uh, maybe one or two severity level related stuff also you you may have you are getting this point right yes so only developers and testers can see this screen, right? Like whatever status, developer issues, everything. Which one? Uh, like this screen. So if we get something like status, issues. what happened? Issues, right? Issues. See, if, see yeah. if you are working in Jira, right? Jira tool means, so usually, right? The issues. Uh, yeah, you said Jira tool can see everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the Jira tool, I think already I have shown you. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, got it. Okay. See, usually if you are going to raise this issues here, and uh, this this is the issue. This can be usually uh, it, it will be available to uh, initially it's going to be available to all the engineers and the managers. Okay, who, uh, who is the person who raised this issue? He he will be able to see. And the person, uh, the managers, uh, uh, they, they will be already given in the uh, notification related stuff. So the managers, QA manager, development manager, and the uh, person like QA team member who is going to raise this issue, initially it is going to be uh, available for this people. Then, if you are watching Rajesh. Oh, just a minute. So initially, the developers, uh, like we three members, are going to have the access, and then, um, uh, like uh, the, the manager is going to assign that issue to the corresponding developer. And the developer is going to get notification and that issue is going to be taken care by the developer. Then he is going to change the status of the process and okay. he is going to... Rajesh, we cannot 